Here's a trick from my book, Grow or Die, The Good Guide to Survival Gardening. Pests are one of the biggest problems in our gardens. You may spend a lot of time putting out nice little transplants and taking care of your gardens and then something terrible will happen. You'll get you know, worms in your ears of corn, you'll have cutworms take plants off the base, you'll have beetles punching holes in your tomatoes, you know. There's a lot of bad things that can happen in a garden. One way, the best way, to avoid pest problems and insect issues is to add more insects. Yeah, that sounds crazy, right? The fact is, a very healthy ecosystem with a lot of life in it tends to be self-regulating. If you have a lawn and you put one little garden bed in the middle of your lawn and you plant rows of tasty cabbages, there's just nothing out there except tasty cabbages in an, you know, as an island in a sea of grass, you're going to have problems most of the time. Sometimes you can get away with it for a year or so before they find you, but usually the pests will find it and they'll start tearing it up. Now, people talk about interplanting and intercropping and companion vegetables. So if you plant more stuff together, you have less problems. And that's true. The more you mix up your beds, the less problems you have with pests. Say if you put a cabbage and a tomato and a pepper and an eggplant and you put in some radishes and then you put some lettuce in and then you come back around you plant a couple more cabbages. You mix it all up. That's great. That makes it better. But here, take it even further. Plant perennial plants. Behind me here I've got a chaya plant with chayote growing on it. Around the base of it there's some uh, garlic chives. Everything looks pretty ugly this time of year because the frosts have already hit it. But I've got a bed back there that's got perennial marigolds, it's got uh, mysore raspberries, it's got um, roses in it, it's got blackberries, it's got chives, it's got mint, it's got all kinds of things. And that bed full of all different types of um, perennial plants that live you know, year after year with lots of mulch around them provide a place for lots of the good guys to live. I've got wasps in there, you know, that come in and they enjoy the uh, nectar and they go hunting for bugs. Wasps eat a lot of caterpillars and that's why you want them around. Everybody wants to get rid of wasps. Don't get rid of wasps. I put a row of mailboxes at the edge of my garden just for paper wasps to live in. I drill holes in wood and set them up for uh, parasitic wasps and hunting wasps and uh, mason bees and other things to build their nests in and then they go through my garden and they do pest control. I've put rocks and stick piles. I've left big patches of weeds. People go, oh goodness, you gotta get rid of all the weeds. No, you just leave the weeds to the edges of your garden, like the old British hedgerow type of a system. That will allow a lot of the good guys space to live. So when the pests come in, you've got the good guys that are already there. They're already there to hunt. You're not having to do all of the stuff yourself. And the more mixed up your plants are, the more ecosystem you can build, the wider variety, you know, instead of just one or two species in a patch of garden bed, you know, put 10, 20, put 30 or 40 other plants outside of it. Plant everything. Plant, you know, ornamentals with flowers on them. Put, uh, you know, um, big patches of weeds, put, let vines grow, let there be a great big mess somewhere near your garden and the predators will live in it. You'll get frogs, you'll get toads, you'll get snakes, oh snakes. Yeah, well snakes will eat, <laughs> I mean, we've got black racers here and they'll eat cockroaches and all kinds of stuff. We've got lizards here that run in and out of the garden all day and eat things. If they have just grass around your little garden bed, there's no place for those guys to live. They're not going to come in and do the pest control for you. So one of the best ways you can do pest control is just like your intestinal tract, right? If you take antibiotics and you wipe out everything because you're trying to get rid of one particular bug, you don't have a balanced digestive system. You don't have all those probiotics, the acetobacter and the uh, acidophilus and those guys. They're, they're not there. So your whole system is kind of screwed up and you got to eat yourself some yogurt or drink some kefir or kombucha or whatever else, you know, live fermented sauerkraut to get your system in line. And garden is the same way. When you put pesticides on it, 
you can damage the soil life, you damage all the good guys that may be there, the little baby ladybugs that just showed up to deal with the aphid infestation. You wipe out the aphid infestation, you get rid of the ladybugs, the aphids come back, the ladybugs don't for a little longer time. The more you can mix things up, the more you can allow a lot of stuff to grow, the less problems you have with pests. That's the best way to deal with pests, is to let it happen the way nature was designed. God put all this stuff in place. So each piece that you take out, the more you have to play God. So there's my two cents on dealing with pests. Allow a lot more insects rather than a lot less, and you'll have less problems. And there's a lot more in my book, Grow or Die, The Good Guide to Survival Gardening, which you can find on Amazon. Look it up under my pen name, David the Good. And for regular tips, visit me on the web at thesurvivalgardener.com. And be sure to like and share my videos and all that kind of stuff. I am now one one hundredth of the way up to John Kohler's Growing Your Greens channel. So I'm getting there. Look out, John. I'm going to catch you.